Hi everybody, it's Frank here. Well, the future arrived yesterday in the form of Windows technical preview of the new version of Windows coming out late next year called Windows 10. And the obvious question is, why is there no Windows 9? What happened to that? Well, according to Microsoft, they want this to be, quote, the first step in a whole new generation. So they wanted a 1 in it somewhere, and they couldn't use Windows 1 because that's been done. So they called it Windows 10. I don't know. Do you buy that? I think they're just trying to get a little extra distance from Windows 8, and they didn't want a 9 to sound more like an update to 8. So yeah, I think that's the reason, but yeah, you form your own opinion there. But the question that comes to my mind is, Windows 10, Windows X, OS X? I don't know. Hmm. But at any rate, here it is. I must say, I threw it up here. Now remember, this is a first release of the technical preview. And according to Microsoft, expect changes to be made before anything is final. And don't expect everything to work without bugs. On and on and on. But for the most part, it does seem to work pretty well. And I've had a look at it, and it looks kind of promising. So if we go over here, one big obvious change that we see right away is that the familiar Windows Start button is here. But when we click on that, unlike Windows 8, we actually have a start screen with programs. You can get to all apps, whatever you've got installed here. You can get to Windows accessories, system, all that good stuff. We even have a shutdown button up here. Ah, ah. But you still have these modern apps, they call it on the side here. So you can still open these things up here as normal. Another cool thing is when you do this, and I'm offline here, but when you do this, you see a minimize, maximize, and uh, a close button up here. Thank you, Windows. You can also just drag it down, throw it to the side, and throw it to the other side, and it resizes. They've made that a little friendlier. The snap features are nicer. You can tile up to four windows on here, or four different sizes, I think it is. Well, if we go over to Windows 8, just for comparison, we do have this start window here. But when you click on it, what's, you get this. And desktop users trying to get work done with a mouse and keyboard, this is not the way to go here. So let's try a little simple example here. And we'll do this from the perspective of somebody that's fairly new to using Windows and is used to using Windows 7. So let's say I'm working on. Uh, Oh, I don't know. I'm working on my paint program here. And I think I need to do a calculation here. I need to see, I need to calculate something. So let me pull up a calculator. Here's one. Bingo. I can do my calculator while I still have my paint program open. I can try something out and, uh, and just minimize it or close it right there. And I've still got my desktop. No worries. Let's try to do the same thing in Windows 8. So here's Windows 8 desktop. First of all, I want to get my uh, paint program going. So I click on here. Oh, what's this? Where's paint? I don't have paint on here. So I click on this button. Uh, paint, paint, paint. People, photos, not in there. Uh, uh, it's not Office 13 accessories. Paint, here we go. Well, there's a paint. I want it full screen. So I'm going to draw my picture here, and I want my calculator to come up. So let's get a calculator. So I'll go down here. Uh, no calculator. So I click on here. Calculator. Here we go. I've got this giant calculator. Do I really want this thing? So I can do my calculating. I mean, you can you can pull it down here and size it smaller. But then you have to drag it to somewhere. Now my desktop is gone. So oh, I can click over here, go back to desktop. Now I got my paint, but I've got this big ugly thing. I can push it over there. Really? Is this the way people want to get productivity accomplished here? So let me get rid of that. And now it's messed up my, my desktop here. So I have to drag that back. But with Windows 10, there's my calculator. Work with it. Get it out of the way. It doesn't interrupt my program here. Very nice. We've gone all the way to the future and gone back to Windows 7. 
Now here's another neat new feature in Windows 10 that I want to show you, and that's this little button down here called Task View. And if we click on that, you can see not only does it show us all the programs that we have open, but we can also click on this little button here that says Add a Desktop. And what that'll do is it gives us a whole fresh new desktop. Now our old one is still there. These programs are still running here. But I can open something on this screen. And like Internet Explorer here, of course I'm not connected to the network. And I can leave that open. Let's say I'm working on something here and I get tired of that and I want to go to a different job description or something here. I can switch back to my other desktop very easily. You can think of that as a multiple monitor setup, except it's all on one monitor. It's a nice feature. It's a good way to quickly go back and forth between things. You can Alt-Tab to uh, define whatever is running on the different ones and to switch between them. And you know, if we go to, uh, let's say, Calculator, it'll open up that desktop. And if we go to Internet Explorer, it's going to open up that desktop. So you can always quickly go to a different desktop, yeah, let's say if the boss is walking by. Now another thing that they've improved on here is the Windows Search. And if I go to here, click on that, or just hit the Windows key on the keyboard, the search box is already highlighted. I can just type something in here. And it'll show me uh, system settings, it'll show me documents, and it'll show me any programs here on the top as normal, but it'll also show Bing search results from the internet down here. And of course it's not doing that now because I have no internet connection. And I found that to work pretty well. It's, it's actually fairly quick to come up with here. And you can just click on one and you've got the, the search result. Now one thing I thought was kind of funny in their preview is they were kind of excited about a little feature they did here in um, the command prompt window that they've actually managed to make this thing copy and paste as normal, which was something that I actually did a video on just a little while back because so many people had no idea how to copy and paste things in and out of the command prompt window. And now all you do is just select something. You can control C and control V and paste things in there. I thought that was kind of funny that they did that. At any rate. Another thing they previewed here in concept is the issue when you have a convertible machine, which is like a laptop in one form that you can detach the keyboard and then you have a touchscreen tablet. What they want to have is a way that the operating system can detect when the keyboard is detached and then offer you the option of automatically switching to a live tile type environment. And they showed a preview of that and it looks really good. It's a great idea. It's what Windows 8 should have been. And I think, I think they're going to get that done. I think they're going to get that working pretty well. Well, now for some final thoughts. Well, I think Microsoft is really on a good path with Windows 10. And I like this interface. I think this is going to be a very good transition for the enterprise users, especially, or anybody is transitioning from Windows 7 and wants to get the added security and new features in Windows 8, but needs to do it in such a way that they can have an interface that's workable and usable for them to get work done. And this might just do it. Microsoft's plan is to have a common development platform for all devices, and all the apps will run sandboxed for security and stability. And they want to be able to have all this stuff findable and purchasable in the Windows Store, kind of along the lines of Linux repositories. That's not a bad idea, not a bad way to go. Another thing they want to do is they want all devices, from desktops to Windows phones, to be managed using a single mobile device management service. That would be a wonderful thing for the enterprise. And I think if they can get that to work and work well, and then tack that in with Windows Server, that would be a terrific thing. Another thing I'd like to see them do while they're at that is I'd like to see them port this interface to Server 2012. Because here's Server 2012. Does this need to be in there at all? Really? I think that should be an update to 2012, and I don't think it should be a separate version of Server. I think it should be a free update, just for putting us through that old interface. Speaking of which, whoever designed that old interface, I think they need to be taken out and buried in a landfill under a bunch of old Atari games or something. Now, I put a link in the show notes here on where you can go to download the Windows Technical Preview yourself if you want to give that 
an install in a virtual machine or something and give it a little run yourself and see how you like it. Another thing you can do is sign up for the Windows Insider program and that'll allow you to send feedback directly back to Microsoft on things that you like, things you don't like, things that you like to see. And you can also see what the other people are commenting about as well. It's a good thing to do. Let's give them our comments. And if you don't like what you have now, you need to tell them what you want. And that's the best way we're going to get it. So at this point, I'd say I'm pretty happy with this. I like this direction. I think Windows X or Windows 10 is going to be a good thing. And all in all, I give it two thumbs up for effort.